This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. It's now time to draw up the phonemes or mouth poses for the character. We're going to do this to show you how you can design a mouth so that it's ready to go for lip syncing when it comes time to rig up your character. And depending on which software you use, lip syncing will be different, but we get to all that in those individual courses. What's important is that you have the shapes down, or at least the most used shapes. So here we have a custom made graph, and we can include this graph in the exercise files as well. So that way you can reference it as you are starting off to make your mouth poses. And these are the poses that Jimmy and I typically use when animating. And we can go through these really quick just to make sure that you understand what all of these mean. So first is the closed mouth position. And we use this basically when the character is at default or if there's, for instance, an M sound, we can use that as well. The second one is ETC. It's the teeth touching, so E, T, C, C, H, S, H. Those are all sounds where this mouth shape would come in handy. Then you have the E and AI poses, which again are just different variations of the mouth opening. And then L and TH, where the tongue is touching the top of the teeth, where you make that th or L sound, you will have the tongue going up. And then where there's O, which is just like how the letter looks. And then there's Q, U, or W. It's the lips are puckered or pressed to create that sound. And then you have F and V where the upper teeth are meeting the bottom lip to create F or V for that sound. And again, we will include this chart within your files so that way you have access to it at any time when creating your phonemes. Now, going back to our main file, we're going to go down here to our mouth, go into that group, and you can see that we have close and then a new layer for ETC ready to go. And we can start here, or really you can start with any phoneme, but since ETC is here, we can just do that. We're going to lower the opacity of closed to around 20%, so that way we can get an idea of where we want this mouth to be. Then, let's just come in and add all the layers for these phonemes. That way it's there, and that way we can just move through the process of design without having to stop and create layers. All right, so we went in and renamed all those. We're gonna go back to ETC and pick a sketching brush. This can be Scott's pencil, which we'll also include in the files as we described before, if you want to use that brush. But now we're just going to come in on that ETC pose and we know it's going to have the teeth closed. And so let's get an appropriate color here for sketching. And we're just gonna come in here and drop the mouth a little bit. And then we can raise it just a tiny bit past the original line. So something like this. Again, you're just sketching, so you don't have to worry so much about exact details. So something along those lines should work for the teeth. But we can always come in here and just grab the transform tool, use your distort, your free form, and just bring it in. We're going to just tighten it up a little bit so it's not as wide as the original closed mouth. And we're just going to come in and trace a line where the teeth will be. We're not going to put in every individual tooth. It's just to help us get something down for when it comes time to ink and fill everything in. So we can come in here and again, just don't overcomplicate it. Just look at your guide. Know that you just need to get those basic shapes down and... Once we get it into animation, all these shapes will blend together and it will hopefully look convincing in animation. But we can just keep working on this, darken in these little areas where the mouth is visible and then we have our teeth. So that way it's easier to see where the teeth are when it comes time to ink them out. And again, 
in isolation, these shapes might look a little bit exaggerated or odd, but once it's all animated, I think you'll find the effect is pleasing. Now, we can either hide the ETC sketch or just lower the opacity if you want to use it as a reference. And the next one is E. So for the E pose, we're going to open the mouth up a little bit more than the ETC pose. So just pay attention here to the strokes that we are applying. Again, mouth is a little bit lower, top is a little bit raised. Typically in real life, if you have your mouth lower, the top isn't typically going to lower or move all that much, but we do have muscles up there and it does give the impression sometimes that it is moving, even if the bones in our face aren't. And so, again, you can play around with that, but you're mostly going to have the mouth drop versus going up when you're doing this. And again, you can play around with the width and how this is looking. And we can add in some teeth now. And come down and add in some bottom teeth as well. So we can arch them out a little bit and just come in and come in and draw in where the tongue would be as well. And then we can shade in any of the darker areas of the mouth where we have those gaps. Now also remember way back when we started sketching the original character, we used certain techniques to help us with the process. So if we were to flip the canvas, we can see if there's any areas that need work in terms of perspective, how the shape is forming. So we can come in here and just use that eraser and just kind of firm up some of those details, maybe smooth that out a little bit, add more of a gap over there. And we can also adjust the teeth, maybe have them have more reach going back more into the mouth. And once you start laying down one of the mouths, you should get a feeling for how this will all be affecting the different phases of the mouth. So you can check yourself with the other pose just to make sure everything is in line. We can hide the ETC pose once we have finished the referencing and we can just keep building this up if we wish, or we can copy and paste this. So we could copy the E pose and paste it into the AI layer. And with this, we could lower the opacity of E just so we have a reference and just, just come in and bring this up a little bit. Since the AI pose is essentially a wider version of E, we can come in and do that. And then using that as the base, we can then come in and erase the teeth. And you can just create a whole new mouth if you wish, but this is just another tip to show you that you can use existing sketches to help you with other poses. And the thing to keep in mind here, the difference between E and AI is not only is the mouth wider, but you can see the whole tongue now when the mouth is opened up. So that's another thing to keep in mind when trying to figure out what the differences are between these two poses. And just come in and try to get as much definition in there as you can. Again, it is a sketch, so if it's a little bit messy, we can clean it up in the inking. Now for L and TH, you can also copy and paste this sketch if you wish, or you can create a new one. The only real big difference between these two is first, we can bring the mouth in just a little bit so it's not as wide. That way there's a little bit of a difference. Close it a little bit more. So that way it's not exactly the same shape as the AI pose, but it is going to share similar traits. And so that's why we can go in here and take advantage of those previous sketches and then copy and paste. But the one thing for sure is we need to adjust that tongue so that it's touching the top. We'll just go in here and raise that tongue up so that it is touching the bottom of the top teeth. Just like that. There we go. 
looking pretty good. And again, you can go in and redraw the whole thing if you wish. You could just kind of get your shapes down and you could have other ways of going about the TH sound, such as just having the tongue kind of go up and taper up like that. It's another way you can do it as well. And it also depends on how the face is shaping. And you can see right here, the example we have for the reference image is actually more of a front forward facing mouth. But again, completely up to you how you want to approach that. But what we have here should work for our purposes. So now we can jump back to our layers. We're going to hide LTH and then go to O. And the O shape, again, is pretty simple. It's just kind of an O shape. Remember, we're at an angle, so it's not going to be a perfect circle. We're going to kind of angle it so it goes along with the shape and perspective of the face. But we can come in and just give them a lip down there, give them a lip on top. And that should also help with the look of it. And you can have the teeth showing as well. Top for sure. You don't have to do the bottom if you don't want to, but the tongue also helps to establish that as well. So there we go. We now have the O shape down and you can make it bigger if you wish. QUW will be similar. Let's lighten the O pose so we can reference it and then come in and it's going to be more puckered. So the O sound actually makes the O shape. But when you're using the QUW sound, you're going to press in your lips more. And again, you can go to the mirror and <laughs> start performing these different sounds to get a better idea. But let's just come in and make a smaller opening and the lips are going to stick out a little bit more. So something like that. And we're not going to show any teeth, maybe a little tongue, but that should help establish that pose. You can add a little bit of something on the side to help it protrude out. But again, that's up to you. We're just going to leave it out just for simplicity. Now for the last shape, we're going to create the FV sound. Let's hide all of the layers except for the original closed mouth pose. So that way we can reference the position and the width. And the FV sound is the top teeth pushing down on the bottom lip. So there's some tension there. And there's naturally going to be an arc like this going downward with the two points. Now, you can have someone smiling while making this pose, but let's just go with this as it will be easier to create and it's easier to learn, I believe. So there we go. We now have the teeth pretty visible. For that bottom lip, you could do something like this, so it's coming from the left. But because of the style, we're going to keep it consistent and just have that lip line go in the opposite arc to show that it's pushing up. And then we can add in those lines on the corners, just like that. So now we can come in and go through all of the poses and just make sure the opacity is up on everything so that way we're good to go for the inking process. All visible opacity is up to 100% on all of these. There we are. It's looking good. There we are. We now have a bunch of sketches, but when we come back, we will start inking these and making them look nice. To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit tunefiles.com.